everybody. So, okay, welcome. Welcome for today's session. Uh, my name is Gustavo Espinosa Ramos. I am a lecturer at the School of uh, WBS. Um, this presentation is about gamification of learning. Because we can talk about many things about gamification, okay? But I only want to focus in using a uh, polyverb. I will try to cover all these specific contents. We have a couple of the at the end, based on the information that I want to share. So if you have your computer scanners, you might use it. Thank you very much for giving the laptop as well. If you don't have a laptop, that's fine. You can use your mobile phone. There are different challenges when we teach now. So uh, one of these specific challenges, I would say, is like, this is about the attention span, the attention of the form of experience that might change and has been changing and has been reducing maybe. And um, checking, I was just checking with different papers in psychology, you know, how, how I change this, this number. But what do you know? What would be the, the average time, the attention span of the students? 60 minutes. 60 minutes? 20 seconds. 20 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I was just checking actually, just in a, a few days ago, right? Different papers and some papers bench between 10, 15, 10, 15 minutes might change. But also some papers are, are, are you, like, depends as well how the class is delivered. It changes in terms of the attention span, new challenges, and as well with the, the protocols that may depend, but also might be a source of discussion for our students. We have also a challenge in terms to cover different types of the curricula. Okay, different so maybe we tend to focus more on the content rather than maybe uh, the students can be uh, under certain attendance concept, right? Um, having a change from the from different kind of uh, learning theories, from kind of more the cognitive part, students can remember things, they memorize things, learn by heart, but also Assessing whether we can reward one specific uh, behavior of the students so they want to learn. And now, kind of my presentation, and that's how kind of I see the re reality. That's my, my bias, okay? This is based on construction. So, the students construct learning when they interact with each other. With constructionism, there is another one which is connectivism, which is learning through technology. And, and students uh, construct learning based on these different uh, opportunities, right? Interaction with other students, with the teacher, but also maybe the online environment they learn on their own as well. So that's, that's how I see reality with construction. Rather than transmission, I can talk, 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 like, like now. We might remember things, we may not. So that's why I mentioned here different type of uh, teaching methods. Problem-based learning is the one also that I, I use it for my module, which is called Sustainable City Economies. Now, uh, gamification. This is something that I was just reading something about the literature and gamification. Basically, uh, they use the mechanics of the game. So, students are going to engage in the game thinking process. They're going to be motivated. Maybe some of them might be very competitive when they're kind of playing the game. Okay. And the idea is just to solve a problem. I will say it's a goal. You have a goal. My goal is achieve maximum points and I, and I achieve it and I want to be really happy right, as students. Oh, other part of the literature, they call it game based learning. And I think something very interesting here is like, in, in, I think some, some in universities, maybe they don't like too much the game, the main game. And sometimes you will be able to see, like, call it serious games, right? Serious games in higher education. Uh, it was very interesting, I said, why do they put serious games? So, so basically, in game-based learning, so there are different kind of goals to achieve a goal, a specific, no? Uh, there are different objectives or rules, could be, for example, the rules about the time. You need to answer, complete this task in one specific time, where the rule when you play a game is what you need to conquer another country, imagine in, in a different games, you need to have more sales if you play a business game, for example, okay? Uh, at the end, the students receive a reward, more points, okay? Um, but the learning, I think, so it's not, I think most of part of the learning occurs in this, in the feedback. Because you will have like a little task, we complete the task, and the, the thing is, the rich part is 
when we discuss with the students, right? This is the first round of the game, what we have learned, what it went wrong, what went well, how we can improve, right? So I think so playing the game is one part of the learning, but I think so this opportunity of the feedback I think is is the key one. Alright. Beautification of learning, there are some different benefits also, but also there are different kind of criticism of beautification of learning, right? For sure, for sure in terms of the games is engagement of the students. I would say the best of the game, we can engage even more. Uh, collaboration in terms like, I don't know how to play the game, could you tell me between them, actually, they have each other, or, if, or whether it's a team game, could be. Whether it's a uh, application, the best of the game, no? In some ways, maybe, a better simulation game, for all the games have simulations, especially in business, recreates maybe a financial environment when you need to improve your marketing or your products, when uh, at the end you need to improve the operations of your company. So kind of try to recreate. I would say it depends on each game. These real applications might vary. Uh, and again, the benefits for me, well, and I think it's the center of this is the quiz feedback. That's for me the most important part of, of the game. The main criticism is maybe more incentivate the external motivation, it's a reward. And the danger with that is if there is no reward, I don't want to learn. I don't want to participate. So that's actually I would say the most difficult part of the criticism of the simulation game. Right. Uh, they will focus I just want to play the game rather than learning, rather than the feedback. Okay. So there are kind of few different kind of issues with the with gamification of learning. Okay, and the other one, I will say the best of the game, maybe can create addiction, okay? And you may notice maybe <laughs> these kind of games, okay? GTA, right, or this kind of other games that maybe for some students they might find it very, very interesting to drive the other, right? But might be a bit of addiction, okay? So, the important thing, they really try to build a game, again, the game is just a tool, it's just a tool. Uh, I think we need to think about this the purpose. Why? Why you want to use a game? For the sake to use a game, what I want my students to achieve, right? And also, all kind of questions the, that we think is how realistic should be that game. And during these years, since I have been teaching in the Westminster Business School, with some colleagues, other model leaders, they have used different games. Where there is one to be this kind of games that uh, the students can play, try to kill each other, right? In a, in a war game. Very realistic, you will see the person not about the design, whether they learn something about that, maybe they learn something about the strategy, maybe. Could be. Whether it doesn't have to be very sophisticated, it could just be a pixel way that they can just probably learn something to achieve a goal again, something about the strategy to play a game. Or the ones that maybe see more often in business. Uh, this is a, a snapshot of a game used in a module related with operations. In this specific module, you have the different tracks, uh, you have the office, and they deliver different kind of raw material, not the seek, maybe the buttons here, and they have to manufacture clothing. Here the, the process where you have different machines, with raw material they produce it, and you have a goal to produce and deliver according to the orders that you receive to the maximum time, or reduce the time and, and, and sell faster. We can also see a person like this here or a person like this here, but it's completely different. Uh, whether that will be the level of reality should be like this, we have one option. The other type of game, which is a simulation game, okay, is something like this that I play for level six students. Level six students, it was a dashboard, it was not about the US, it was for a company who sells cars, so we need to sell different type of cars. And the students in each kind of uh, screen, they can see data, basically numbers of the market, of the competitors, the price. So whether and, and how they to make decisions, they can to do this. They have to announce, uh, they put some documents here and allow some decisions, and that's how they play it. Completely different to this kind of games, right? And you have the controls here. This kind is only different. Uh, or whether do we need to do, do we need to just technology actually to facilitate this? There are other models like for example 
uh, work on the assignments once the students have to create a board game. This are involves the literature, classification of different games, the classifications varies depends on the type. Okay. Based on the purpose to be learning goals, different ones here, about knowledge acquisitions, content understanding, whether you classify the game in terms of the learning content, which is the second one here, based on the study disciplines, maybe social, social science. The two screenshots I show you was for business games, the simulation games, okay? Uh, could be for languages, somebody might say Duolingo. Duolingo might be a kind of game where you compete with each other and you learn in terms of learning a language, right? Maybe it can be in this classification. Another way to classify games, another way is based on the uh, technical characteristics. Games based on the strategies, the first picture that I showed you before, no? they have to kill each other or something like that, or they need to conquer another kind of a, a fictional country, different approaches, concepts. You can play as a single player, multiplayer, could be linear, collaborative, and so on. Another way to classify the games is based uh, in the platform. Basically, are you going to play in the computer? Is allowing your mobile phone? And another way to classify uh, games is based on the type. Gameplay description, uh, for example, could be based on puzzles, uh, puzzles uh, adventures, strategy. Here, I want to use only the word a very simplistic way to create, make a quiz, make a game. What is the link between assessment and games? You mentioned about games and why you press a title about assessment because this is something called classroom assessment techniques or CATS. What does it mean, classroom assessment techniques or CATS? Well, basically, is I would say, it's a formative assessment, basically. That's the synonym, a formative assessment. Whether you put the anonymous, no, it's formative, you can do it in class, or asynchronous, for example, depends how you want to design it and the purpose of doing that. Things so very interesting, I really like this part, okay, because when I was just doing the quizzes or using classes, do I? But what time is better at the beginning of the class, of the lecture, for example, for one time with the students? At the middle or at the end of the lecture, right? And I would say depends. Depends on uh, what is the intention because maybe at the beginning it's just to assess a pretty knowledge. So I pass for two hours in my model is two hours. I can take a break, 10 minutes between the two hours, nine in the morning. And I have the quiz, the competitions, or at the end of the second hour or at the end of the second hour. The first hour or at the end of the second hour. Depends. Examples, there are many cats, huh? Cats, there are many cats, and there are many. So one of these ones is the thing where you share. So, okay guys, in bed right now, we will to reflect on what we call here so far in gamification of learning. Uh, you want to ask a question, and you want to discuss the answer with in pairs, right? Could be one anonymous way. Uh, you can provide the answers in the sticky notes. You can have a partner, and they go to a blogger. They can just share it, say it. Different ways they can implement this thing per share. The other one is the one in the paper. Open a book of them. <coughs> uh, at the end of the class, individually, you want to write in a sticky note or in a packet, or you just want to share to the whole class or seminar. What is the most important thing that you learn in the two hours lecture? Or, and what is the question that you must be clear? And because, for what I have seen so far, the students sometimes they don't like to show you, yes, I don't understand this. Right? So, many later, that's going to make anonymous. For a partner, for a sticky notes, no need to use technology, right? We can use different things. So, and I will be discussing, no? I'm going to dedicate, what, 15, 20 minutes of kind of a revision at the end of the session, maybe, to discuss the answers. Okay? Okay, so now, from the roads, theories, we now in down, now we focus on the specific, which is Paul Everywhere. The use of Paul Everywhere, the purpose uh, as a product of assessment is not graded, okay? Uh, but again, the reality and based on the literature is not just the answer the questions, it's this discussion after. That's how the learning occurs. Anyway, so yes, so product of assessment, uh, they can collaborate, uh, 
again, we can quantify uh, the results of the answers, okay? Uh, if you are the University of Westminster staff, whether you are the year, whether you are benefits, regardless of that, you, we can send an email to Blackboard Support Team, this email address, to create a Pony River uh, institutional account. If you don't have it, do it. Believe me, it's going to facilitate a lot of our work. If you are going to be there, you can create a, a Pony River and share it with your teaching team. And they don't have to do anything. They just only need to create an account. And that's it. You share it with them. They don't have it. They only need to click to share the poll and that's it. How to create? You go to Pony River. You want to click on activities. Here's my way to organize it. I love to have folders. The folders that uh, I create is based on each module. I have different modules, I have different folders per module. And the activities, the activities basically means the, the polls in Polyweaver, okay? The activities are the polls in Polyweaver. So each activity is in one folder per module, okay? And then click on activity, okay? Let's see one more. The type of activities, Poly River call activities to the type of questions. So we have this, this just a, a few ones, because when you see these ones in the computer, when you click in the three dots, when you click in the three dots, you want to see more questions, okay? Uh, I have not used all of them. The ones that I usually use very often is multiple choice, survey, and votes, and competitions. When you play multiple choice, this can be one single answer, correct answer, or multiple correct answers. That doesn't do with, with this option. Okay. In survey, basically, uh, you have different type of questions. And then some of them that we can see here, in the left hand side, you can have in the survey, no multiple choice, you can have in the cloud, I think so. Uh, that's why also I like service, especially this for edition, for different topics. Uh, the outboats, I like the outboat, which is the, well, you're going to see here, you can just click in the three dots, you want to see the outboat, it's like, somebody is going to type the answer. You type the answer, you submit it, everyone will see the answer, and if I type the answer, I just click and comes up. So it is going to be five. I, that's something that I really like as well to use. And the ones they want to explain, for all of them, the ones they want to explain right now, I want to focus on these competitions. Okay? So competitions, which is basically the, this icon here, is the one. The competitions, uh, it's an easy way to get, to get the presentations. The participants, when they answer the correct answer, they get 1,000 points. But, 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 how you want to have it is based if you write the correct answer, but also according to the time. The more time that you take, less kind of points they're going to give him put everywhere. So this kind of rules we need to mention to the students before just playing the game. You may see it when you just uh, activate the games, okay? Between questions. In between questions, look that you want to have a leaderboard. So when you review the right question, okay? Then you want to see the leaderboard any Every question you finish, you want to see who is the top. Okay. So, for example, I want to create my competitions, okay? So, in this specific screen, I click competitions. When I click competitions, it says, add their name. This is the name. I want to type it in. This is the name of my competitions. Okay, so the competitions are kind of one. <laughs> the only issue with polymer competitions is only allow us one type of questions, which is the multiple choice questions. That's it. We cannot use the Q&A, the word cloud, the survey, no. It's only the multiple choice. Within the multiple choice, unfortunately, it's only one answer. You cannot change it. It's fixed. It's not here. You cannot change it. And it's only one answer. And the answer that you want to pick, when you have the options, you need to pick when you click on the it gives you an answer. This little icon here, okay. and all these little icons here, mm -hmm. is to add a picture. Okay. So, for example, because we have a limit uh, word count in each kind of row, it's maximum number of characters. But, if, for example, in one of my quizzes, I want to show an example, 
it was like the critical reasoning question was one paragraph of a short mini case study. So how I can do it? I make it up, I make it a video, uh, an image. And I put the image here as an image. And then the thing will be like, the first one, and then the image, and then the answers. If the answers are very long, you can just competence of image and upload an image. Competitions are the same. So basically when you just create the competitions, so you, you click in create, so at the end, you just click here and create this option here. When you create, this is where you're going to see by default. And by default, I will say, if you want to play simple, don't touch it. Okay. So, allowing answers is activated by default. So, me and students, I will find the wrong answer, but I can get it and go for the other one. So, I will say, okay, here is the piece. A time based score? Yes, at least a little as it is. And by the first, they give you seconds. How many seconds? 20. 20, yes. So basically, by default, you want, we want to have 20 seconds. Can we change the, the time? Yes. Yes. Here are the buttons minus 5, minus, minus 5, or, or more, 5 more seconds. Okay? You can just change it. Up to you. Yeah, I usually give it as 20 seconds. Huh? But if it's a long question, like in my mini case studies, we need to give them more time to think about it. But now, if we are model leaders, I will, I usually use my own competitions in my lectures, okay? But this year I try to share it with my teams. I, I have six seminar leaders in my model, okay? So <coughs> this time I try to facilitate the work. Let's create a competition for you, okay? I create a one where you need to create the Westminster account. I want to show you where you can find it. Find the, the competitions, activate it, and that's it. And manage the, the answer. That's it. So, how can do that? This is slice show this. So, sharing the polygon competitions with our teaching team. How? Again, I love folders. Okay, I love folders. And we want to share a folder. And why the folder? This folder is a sustainable state economy. 2023, for example, I want to share it with my team. And in that folder, I want to use probably the word in week 4, week 6, and week 8. So in that specific folder, it's going to be my competitions. Can I share it? Do I put the emails of the staff or how? It's easy, so because if they already have their Westminster account, yes. everyone is going to see it. Or they don't have to, you, don't, you don't have to put the email address, no? Everyone is, that's why the most important part is my teaching team, they have already an account of Westminster or the account. Create them later on the competitions. And look, I wrote this. And this part for this option, okay? I did a one competition for week two. My seminar leader has three seminars. Okay? My other seminar has one seminar in the same hour. We have the leader, I decided. I want to copy three times in that folder that competitions because you have three seminars and you want to run that competitions per seminar. You want to see the three, the three competitions but you only want to use one because you only have one seminar. This part here is like for the moment you decided the maximum number of seminars of one <coughs> teaching team has. Okay. I want to create I want to copy as, as the maximum numbers because you have three seminar classes or I need to facilitate for you three competitions to say. Okay, that's the option. I create my post, my, my folder, okay, I click in the three dots, and the three dots I click in share. So, here, when you just click in share, you are here sharing the whole folder. In this folder, for example, I have this activity, this activity, and this activity, okay? All of these ones are automatically have to be shared because they were in that folder. And that's why I think I prefer to share folders rather than activities. When you can share, uh, I was asking Bravo support team. I saw these two things, two groups. I see when you share, you want to share with the whole University of Westminster. Okay. Everyone at Westminster, the staff at Westminster, who has a folder in their account, they want to see, they want to see my folder with my activities. But also there is a subgroup, which is called Bravo Yes. So everyone who is a good business will be able to see my folder and my folder the activities that I create. Not necessarily, not necessarily competitions. I share it 
and this is really important. Do you want to share it in the forest minister? Maybe there is a group per school. If it's not, maybe it should be replaced with Lagos of Portugal. If we are the seminar leaders, in my name, if we are the seminar leaders, somebody create the policy well for us, the activity. So basically, what, if I am the seminar leader, I need to go to the policy well, then I need to click in this well, left hand side, which is called Share With Me. And in Share With Me, I want to see all the folders that were shared at the University of Westminster. The interesting part here is like, uh, you want to see here the person who creates the folders, okay? And look, we want to here see they share with which group? Yeah. They share with everyone at Westminster, or they share with the only years only. And you can see how many, how many competitions or activities could be absorbing, could be different than here, right? Now, okay, I found the folder. But then, for example, I want to, ah, my mother is my mother now, but she is the mother and it's moral. Imagine. I click there, when I click in that folder, I want to see all the different activities in that specific folder. So this is the folder that was shared with me, and these are the three different activities. Remember that a few minutes ago I was telling you, your model video decides how many times you want to copy the same activity. Ah, because you have four seminars, yeah. I'm going to copy four times the same activity. And you're going to do four times per seminar, right? But my seminar, uh, my seminar leader here, she only has one seminar. Out of the four, she can only use one, that's it. Mm -hmm. Forget the rest. The seminar leader cannot change anything here. Because they already created this. So, that's the thing is, for me, in a more simplistic way, me model leader, this is the title of a great tool seminar and the level of the of the of the, of the activity. But, 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 but the problem is the more work for the more work for the more leader because yeah. I need to move on. So I will say the seminar guys, you know the, which one you will use for your seminar class. And how do you want to know? Because if today I do this one, you won't have a lot of people here. So they need to be able 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 to be to be able to be we two seminar, yeah. we force a uh, activity X. That's the advice of the middle leader who wants to create. Some tips after using these competitions. Uh, setting the wrong rules, okay? In terms like, this apply also for any type of activity. Yeah. Remember, some activities in quality ways, they need to write something. If they want to write something in anonymous way, and say, well, I this, Modeling the language, knowing number of domains, okay? Simply the numbers. And I always have to say that to my students, right? Why number of domains? Sorry, I want to stop using the tools and I want to do the, the boring way of teaching. I talk and you say. So I'm, and they get it. And somebody get it. Uh, yes, what's more? Uh, that's another thing. Look, uh, when are we going to use the competitions? At the beginning, at the middle, at the end, that will be the depends of if you want to use a prior knowledge or a posterior knowledge. That depends on the purpose, depends on the session. Um, and now, this is another one. If you use competitions in different weeks, because I saw my students, they like the competitions, or some of them, they like it, and they become very competitive. Okay, I will I use it in one module seven different times. <coughs> but because in the time, every week I use it, I use it for seven weeks only. There was one winner. Then I thought, what if I have a winner of the winners? The winners of all the seven weeks, when none of them participate, I want to count it. So, at the end, I have uh, the winner of the winners, just to, to reward consistency in the, in the participants, okay? So, basically, that's what I did, no? The winner of the winners, 
If you want to use the notifications in different ways, try to ask your students, please use the same name in every single competition. Try to use the same name because if you use different names, it's difficult to give you the, the points. Okay? In total, I mean, in all the seven weeks. Uh, this is like this. How can you come to learn the responses? I have seven weeks. Every week, I have to give you the responses, three dots, three responses, and I don't have it as a spreadsheet. And then manually, I have to count the votes for each of them. But again, if you use this winner of the winners. Some conclusions. Students develop knowledge through interaction. Uh, clarifications can take different forms. Not necessarily it have to be something very technological. Uh, we will offer different activities. Uh, with quality competitions, that you can clarify the learning. Quality uh, will only permit multiple choice questions, only one correct answer, unfortunately. unfortunately. The model leader can facilitate the use of quality activities with the teaching team. Mm -hmm. And the key part, defining the model leader, the maximum number of activities that you want to create is based on the maximum number of seminars that in that week one of my seminar leader has. That's, that's, that, that's a rule. Okay. So now, we have an activity now. So look, for example, if I'm going to create a competition, yeah. Yeah. this is the one here. So I want to click in the competitions, okay? Uh, I have not activated yet the competitions, okay? Ah, uh, we want to see the minute. Let me see if it, it should work in this way. Let me see. Do you see here now? The, the, I click here, yes. and you want to see the QR scan, the QR codes. When you uh, when you scan the QR codes, it might ask you your name. Uh, let's see. So basically, look, this is the screen that all of us want to see. We up to 1,000 points per answer. Okay, I want to click the next one. So now, pay attention. So when I create this one by the phone, it's 20 seconds. Okay, I did not share, I did not change the 20 seconds. So the 20 seconds is that since you want to see the options. This is the question. We can clarify the question. Okay, guys, the 20 seconds counts since we see the options. Okay, it's very clear the questions. Yes, 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 okay. Now, your 20 seconds starts from now. An example of learning theory is cooking, differentiation, constructionism, positivity, positivism, diversification. You have now 14 seconds left. 20 seconds? Because... Yes, because the 20 seconds finish. That's correct. That's correct. So, okay. So, we mark, you don't have to start with different directions to mark, right mark, the wrong mark, and you have time and chance to do another. Okay. That's for the learning. Don't worry. So, now, let's go to C now. The next one is see the answer. Okay, guys, the right answer is what? Constructionism. So, a hundred students actually didn't decide this specific answer. You can see here the option which is more. Uh, what can I see more? Diversification. Okay, you can see. And then, for me, the learning is when discussing the answer. Because if they have the word wrong, oh, what positivism? Remember, positivism was blah, 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 blah. Okay? So, that's the most interesting part is the discussion after. So now, we only see the questions, the answers we discuss, and now we see the leaderboard. So now the next one, this is the leaderboard. So the end is, is with 1,000 points, and we know 1,000 points, everybody, all of them, 1,000 points. Look at that. It's the time. Remember the time? If you have have the seconds, but the more time that you take, they give you less, less points. Let's so start again in the, in the, in the in next, next time, but usually it's actually automatic. I don't think you need to click send, okay? And look, and there's somebody which is best, so the person is skip. They skip, the, which is fine, huh? But, but remember the point I was telling you, like, if you want to run competitions in every week, yeah. uh, how I want to know who are doing So that's just a message to people. But again, but again. Uh, and that's totally fine because I mean, some students they want to play the game, or they ah, because this is my name, I want to be my friend, you know. So I think that's why some students are motivated on that. Okay, one more. Next one. The next question is X stands for the 20 seconds run from. Are you ready? For the options? Only 20 seconds when you see that they are coming, sir. And next one. So it stands for. Common word about the system. Class 
last one as in timeline, last one as in techniques, or the last one, which is shall not take the transit system. And you have a cat there. Two seconds left, two seconds left. Okay, so we have seven answers, so you can see here the top seven answers. Okay. Uh, let's see. What was the right answer? The right answer was classroom assembly techniques. Yes, so let's see if the table change. I'm not sure if it changed or not. Ah, that, yes, it changed. Kind of a table because maybe they answer in a faster way than the other persons, right? So we have here this is the third, second question of the of the game. So very competitive so far. Very competitive. So I think we have one more question and that's the question. Could be Saudi, could be Saudi, could be multiple choice, could be any of the activities that you have it. Oh, yeah. uh, but the thing is, I think she has more questions. If you want more questions, make her sorry. Because sorry allows you to have many questions. Yes, and you don't have a leaderboard, you will not have it. Yeah. Next question, we can create only multiple choice questions in poly level competitions. In this case, it's just three and four, yes or no, uh, 18 seconds. We can create only multiple choice questions in poly level competitions. Okay, time's up. Let's see the answer. Yes, only multiple choice options available in polymer competitions. So, uh, this is the leaderboard. It's changing, does it change? Ooh, look at that, it's changing at the bottom, it's changing, right? Ooh, very well, right, it's David, yes. Oof. I think that's the last question now. The last question is this one. A good tip when using polymer competitions in the same module in different weeks is... You cannot do it. Ask students to use the same name every week. Use a different type of questions per week, word cloud, a vote, etc. So let's see the right answer. Who do that? You cannot do it. Ask students to use the same name every week. And the check shows us the right answer. This is the right answer. Ask students to use the same name every week uh, if you're using different weeks, okay? And let's see the leaderboard. The leaderboard, when you see the confetti, is the last one, so well done, Nino, well done, Nino. First one, David, second, and strawberry, sir. So, for example, are, are you here right now? Are you, this is, this is, this is, for example, a babies. So, look, we have a new folder for somebody shares. I click and share with me, and share with me now. Test the angle lecture on risk. Yeah, yeah. That's the one for the you share it. I click here and then I want to see you create that one. But you're gonna give me the one, right? Yeah. Imagine, imagine I have only one cellular. I'm your cellular reader, okay? I can use that one. Let's move it now, let's move it now, for example. Ah, hello guys, this is the class. I'm the cellular reader. I click here and basically I click play and it is great. You see, it was easier for me seeing a leader. I didn't have to do anything. Only go there, log in, click play, and that's it. Okay. Um, but if you have three seconds, then you need to have three three points. That's the thing that we're talking, right? Yes. But, but, the same thing. Right? Yes. Yes, that's correct. That's that's the point. That, that, that doesn't make sense, right? You, you, you see it here, right? So, then you saw, which was the question? The top. The top. The top. Yeah. 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 Yeah.